Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're going to talk about the Nord Stage 3 layering and the Nord Stage 3 splitting options that you have. Uh, the Stage 3 in particular is pretty robust in this area. If you're new to the Nord Stage 3 or you are thinking about getting one, this video will really help you understand splits and layers. For those of you who have been following me for quite some time, you'll quickly see that this is somewhat of a review, but a particular subscriber named Steve Wilson uh, asked if we could somehow dedicate a video to this subject of splits and layers for the Nord Stage 3. And I agreed and he sponsored this video, so that's why you're seeing it here brought to you today. So with that in mind, let's begin our lesson. Okay, the Nord Stage 3 has three sound engines, and these sound engines represent the organ, the piano, and the synth. So let's just talk about the organ for a second. The organ is a sound engine, and it's a unique thing to Nord in the way that it's constructed, in the way that it's designed, and its properties and abilities. It's pretty darn awesome. In fact, um, it's emulating old-time organs, pipe organs, B3 organs, Vox Continental, uh, the Farfisa and all sorts of things. And then what you can do with that is layer upon that different effects, as well as things like a rotary speaker from the Leslie line of speakers and things like that. But then you get the piano engine as well. And the piano engine is derived and also proprietary to Nord uh, based on their sampling technology. So they've sampled amazing pianos, all different shapes and sizes, both you know acoustic pianos, grand pianos, upright pianos, as well as electric pianos, things like a Rhodes, uh, Fender Rhodes electric piano, um, clavinets, and Wurlitzers, and all kinds of things. So uh, the piano engine by itself will rival most keyboards. And you add on top of that the ability to play samples, as well as the ability to have a full-fledged, you know, working synthesizer with up to four oscillators, if you consider both panel A and B. Now, speaking of panel A and B, this is the notion where you can take all three of those sound engines and essentially double of them. Uh, it's like getting a whole nother keyboard that can play three more sound engines. So, so the idea of this is what's called a panel. A panel A is a set of three sound engines with their configurations, all their effects unique to themselves as a setting. So think of this as one collective group of sound engines, either playing together or in a split configuration, all stored within panel A. Then you have the notion of panel B, which is essentially all of that doubled uh, with the same abilities, the ability to play an organ, the ability to play an a piano or a synth. Okay, so now let's dive in and get a little deeper. We talked about the Nord Stage 3 and all the things that it can do in terms of sound engines, but here we're talking about the idea of panels and layers. So let's just focus on the idea of layers for a moment. Layers is the idea of playing two sounds at the same time. So you have your organ engine here, which is located on this part of the keyboard. And likewise, you have your piano engine, which is located on this part of the keyboard. And then finally, you have your synth engine, which is located on this part of the keyboard. So if we deconstruct this further and see how layers work, it works a little like this. You have your organ, your piano, and your synth, all with an on-off button there, you'll see, indicated. This is the on-off button. So you can choose to either have the engine sound or not. All of this collective is considered to be on either panel A or panel B. In this case, we're looking at panel A, organ, piano, and synth. Now, if I were to turn on the organ engine, and play any key on the Nord keyboard, you would hear organ across the entire range of the keys that I play. Actually, this is quite simple, and most people actually understand this from the get-go. The organ engine is on, I hear the organ. Simple enough. If I also turn on the piano engine at the same time, now both the organ and piano engine are on at the same time, I will instantly see and hear the fact that I have both organ and piano playing at the same time. So if I hit, let's say, a C key or a C chord or an F key or an F chord, they're both going to sound and generate sound from the organ and piano engines. Okay, now the volume is what you're going to dictate the mix, whether you want to have a lot of organ emphasized or a lot of piano emphasized or a beautiful mix of both. 
Add to the fact that you can now also turn on the synth engine and you can either play a sample from that synth engine or you can actually have the synthesizer playing from one of its oscillators. And this comes together as a layer. This is known as a layer. All three sounds playing at the same time, layered on top of each other. It's like having three keyboards really under your fingertips. All three are, are being sounded. But then add to the fact that you also have a panel B that can be invoked. Also with an organ, piano, and synth engine. So really all the same features. And that's located here on the keyboard, right below the program section. And it's really something quite simple. It's simply called panel A and B. And the beauty of panel A and B is that you can choose to play only panel A, only panel B, or both at the same time. And that's where it gets crazy. So let's just assume that I've turned on my Nord Stage 3 and I've got both panels playing at the same time, which you do that by clicking both buttons at the same time. And here comes panel B. I'm going to turn on that organ engine. And now I've literally got two organs, a piano and a synth playing all at the same time. I can turn on my piano engine for that panel B and my synth engine for that panel B. And now I've got six sound engines all playing at the same time. Now they don't all have to play the exact same uh, tones or the exact same samples or anything like that. For instance, on panel A, I could have a B3 on the organ engine, or on panel B on my organ engine, maybe I want to put a pipe organ just to mix the two and see what that sounds like. Then for my piano, I could have a traditional acoustic piano on panel A, and then on panel B, I could back that up with, let's say, an electric piano. And then for synth and samples, maybe I have a clarinet sampled on panel A, and on panel B, I have a wild 80s-like synthesizer playing in the background. Now, generally speaking, people don't play all six of these at the same time in a layer because there's a lot going on. But layering all six of these together is something that's possible to do. So the idea of panels is actually quite powerful when you extend that beyond just the sounds themselves, but rather the settings too. For example, each one of these engines gives you the choice to provide an octave shift. What does that mean? It means that, let's say, if I take the organ, and I'll take this one for an example, if I push this bottom button or this left button, that will bring the organ down an octave. It'll move the entire tone bank, if you will, down an octave, so I'll be playing a lower C versus the C that I'm playing, if I was playing C. Um, or I could move that up as well. So you get to shift the actual range, the octave range, of each of these engines and again, giving you that variety that you need if you're going to mix and layer sounds like this. Um, you also get the choice of a pitch stick or a sustain pedal on each engine. And that can be quite powerful. Let's take an example of that for a second. Let's just say for a moment that I have the sustain pedal on my piano engine on panel A. So if I had that invoked, you'd see in here sustain pedal. So what would that mean? If I were to play the keyboard and let go, but keep my sustain pedal invoked, all you'd hear sustaining is the one piano on panel A. That's it. So that's very interesting. If you then turned on the sustain pedal on panel B for the piano, you would get a similar effect. I'd have now both pianos sustained as I let go of the keys and invoke that pedal you'd hear that. So it just gives you a broad example of some of the subtleties and some of the detail you can get into when you start talking about layers. Now, let's just say I also wanted to turn on the pitch stick for that wild 80s synth that I was talking about so that when I move the pitch stick when I'm playing, the only thing that's going up or down tones via the pitch stick is going to be that one synthesizer on panel B, which is good because generally you don't want to bend your pianos all out of shape but it's great and fine and perfectly legit to bend your synthesizer out of shape, as we all know. So those are some interesting things. Now then add to the fact that these panels can also uh, distinguish and individualize the morph settings, the extern settings, and the effects, so that when you invoke either panel A or panel B, you can have independence of all those settings. So for example, if you wanted the piano in panel A to have a digital delay, you can do that. But maybe the piano on panel B, again, sounding at the same time, maybe you don't want delay on that. Maybe you want a different effect. Maybe you want a wah effect or you want, uh, you know, a different EQ setting or something like that. So very powerful. Not pictured here is the ability to manipulate the rotary speaker also by panel. So let's take a look at an actual Nord Stage 3 now so you can see firsthand what this layering is all about.
You want to navigate to the latest program, the program without any settings. Should be towards the end of the list if you turn your knob to the right. Remember your Nord Stage 3 comes with 100 empty slots here for program, so just pick any empty slot. And then let's talk about layers. So the easy part about layers is you just turn on the sound engine. Here I'm turning on the organ engine. And of course you hear the organ. Piano, I'll hear piano and organ together. And then synth, all three. Now separately it sounds like this. So you already heard the organ. Let's just hear the piano by itself. Fine. And then the synth by itself. Just a sine wave. So besides layering these on top of each other, playing across the whole keyboard, you can also mix the volume. So let's just say I had organ, but I wanted less organ. I've just now got my sine wave and my piano. And just a touch of organ. Take out the piano. Now we're just talking about sine wave and organ. Or take out the sine wave a bit. And that's how that works. So layering and mixing sounds is, is very straightforward. Now the other thing you can do is you can adjust the octave range within each engine. So let's just say I wanted the synth engine to be higher in the register, I can just push the octave shift button up an octave, and now we're up a little higher. Now I have much wider sound uh, because I can change the octave. Let's make that organ one octave lower. Now the organ's way down there, like that. And the sine wave is way up here, like that and together the sine and the organ by themselves. It's a very wide sound and the piano somewhere in the middle. So there's the idea of volume and layers based on engine on or off. Add to the fact that you have a panel B. If I click on panel B, um, again, I start from a blank canvas and I can turn on those engines and do the exact same thing. Or I can change the sound up a little bit on panel B. Let's take, take the organ and make it into a Vox continental instead and bring in some of those uh, bring down those to subtle make the organ a little bit more subtle by taking the draw bars down maybe put some vibrato on there we go so we can hear it a little better and then the piano uh, engine for this one I will make an electric piano and then for the synth we'll change it to a super wave that 80s Super wave saw. Now lower the volume a little bit because that one comes out strong. So all three of those together, the piano, the organ, and the synth. Again, a very strong, wide, thick sound, layered. So besides that, now you can switch between A and B, just like that, or I can play both of them together by hitting both buttons at the same time, or clicking by pushing both buttons at the same time, I can actually uh, get away with all six engines at the same time. Let's hear what that sounds like. I can really hear on that sine wave way up. Lower that a little. Okay, so that's the idea of layering sounds. Now let's um, look at the example that I had earlier where we had the sustain pedal on two of the piano engines, both A, A, and B, and I had the pitch stick on on panel B with the synth. So first let's go to panel A and make sure the sustain pedal is on piano. It is already by default. Let's take off the sustain pedal for the synth. I just hold the shift key and push the sustain pedal button. That's panel A. Flip on over to panel B. Make sure the sustain pedal is on for piano and take it off of the synth, but leave the pitch stick on. Okay, so now I have on panel B, just the pitch stick on synth, sustain pedal on piano. Go back to panel A, sustain pedal, and let's take off the pitch stick on panel A as well, just to mimic exactly what we had there in the original example so we can kind of bring all of these ideas together. So with that in mind, if I push the keys down, hold the sustain pedal, and let go of the keys while holding the pedal, I should only hear the, the pianos ring out as sustained. Let's hear how that sounds. And my pianos are ringing out. So. That's an interesting thing. And then what you can do here is if I pitch bend these six sounds together, the only thing that should actually bend is the synth on the super saw on panel B. And that is in fact the case. So that's layering. Simple, pretty straightforward, but very powerful.
Okay, now let's talk about splits. This gets a little bit more detailed, a little bit more complicated, so put your thinking caps on and let's go for it. The Nord Stage 3 can be split up to three times in a variety of locations. In fact, there's 10 locations where you can choose where your split points are. You can split once, giving you a left and a right. You can split twice, giving you a left, a middle, and a right. Or you can split three times, giving you four zones, a left, a left, and a right, and a right. So that is quite powerful, and you'll see that here in a minute when we take a look at that first hand. So let me show you how this works. If I have panel A, and I've invoked three splits, that's as many splits as you can have, those three splits will cut through both panels. In other words, you can't have a different split point on panel A than you do on panel B. Once you choose a split, and once you split either panel, both panels automatically get split. You don't get a choice in that. So once you push the split button, the keyboard is split, and both panels are adhering to that location of where you decide to split it. So in panel A, I'm going to choose to turn on my organ engine, and you'll note that I have all four lights illuminated here, meaning even though the keyboard is split in three sections, I choose to play the organ on all four zones. This will make more sense when we start splitting this up here. Now if I have the piano engine on, I choose this piano engine to only play on the right side, or the right two zones. And that's what it looks like here, if you were to see it and play it. So immediately, if I were to play the left hand and I choose to play on this side of the keyboard, I wouldn't hear the piano, I'd only hear the organ. But if I choose to play from this side of the keyboard on, from this C on, I would hear both the piano and the organ. Taking a step further, if I have my synth on panel A, but only on the left two zones, it would look something like this. So now my left hand, I'd hear the synth and the organ. My right hand, I'd hear the organ and the piano. Make sense? All right, throw on top of that panel B, which gives you a whole nother set of options. You still can't choose the splits as far as where they're located, but you can choose what engine plays on what zone. And in this case, panel B, I've got zone uh, the, the left and the right in the middle, or the two middle zones illuminated, and that's what it looks like here. So in this case, if I were to play this C right here, I'd hear organ, organ, and piano. So I'd hear three layered sounds. If I were to turn on this piano engine to just the three zones on the right, it would look like this. And finally, let's say I want that crazy, crazy 80 synth on the left side, and I only want to really use it for bass, I can do that and just illuminate this far left zone, and it looks like that. So, just taking each zone one at a time, let's look at that. If I were to play the keys in this zone, I'd hear the synth, two, both synths and the organ. If I were to play any of the keys in this zone, I would hear the organ, the samples, the organ, again on panel B, and the piano. If I were to play any of the keys in this zone, I would hear four layered sounds, two organs, and two pianos. And if I were to play any of the keys in this right zone, I'd hear organ, piano, and piano. Two pianos and an organ. So that's how crazy the split can get. But you take this notion of splits and layers and put them together, and all of a sudden you have a lot of interesting things that can be done. All right, on top of that, just as a reminder, each one of these engines can choose your octave shift and your pitch stick and your suspension or your sustain pedal. Then you have the options of the morph, extern effects, all within the panels, all happening within these sound engines, so quite powerful indeed. All right, let's go take a look at these splits in action on the actual Nord Stage 3. Okay, let's talk about splitting the Nord Stage 3. And we put, when we talk about splitting, we're actually going to introduce both layering and splitting at the same time. Yes, the focus of this lesson will be on splitting, but in fact, when you have a split fall on a certain designation and you add more than one engine, the engines sometimes layer on top of each other because they share the same split location or the split zone. So we'll see all of that here in a minute. So first, navigate to a blank program on your Nord Stage 3 and locate something where we can begin. All right, so the notion, let's, let's start simple. Let's do a very simple split. I'm going to have my organ on the left side in zone 1, and I'll have my piano on the right side in, let's say, zone 2 and I'll split once. And to split the keyboard, it's really easy. I'll zoom in here and show you which button to push. It's this one right here. It's called Split. And when you push it once, by default, you'll get the mid 
range split by default. So let's back this up a little bit. There we go. And now we will see what that's like. So it's going to split here by default. Now, if I want to see the details of my split, and it's a kind of a cool screen to begin with, um, you want to push and hold the split button. And appearing before you will be all the details of what's going on with that split. Let me quickly explain this screen because I think it's worth taking 30 seconds here and talking about it. First of all, we can see the label of it. It's called keyboard split. Okay, pretty straightforward. Our first row is width, and there's off, one, and off. Each, each one of these columns represents the low, the mid, or the high split point. Now, obviously, if I only have one split point invo invoked, in this case, it's the mid split, split point. Uh, obviously, that's the only thing that's going to ma matter, and that's why these two are off, and this middle one here, mid, is one, and F4 is the key that I'm splitting at. So if I want to change the split location of this middle split, I just push this button here to navigate to this area, representing mid, and as I push it, you'll see the split point change. Simple as that. I can also use the program button to flip up and down. And you'll notice this green light indicating the split point. Now you might be asking, what's this one above that? The one represents the width of the crossfade. The crossfade is the difference between one split or another. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So we'll keep our split point at C4. And then it's a matter of turning on the engine and designating the engine as to which split it falls under. So for Oregon here, let me back off so you can see that. Okay. Here you can see by default when I push on the organ, all four green lights are illuminated, representing the zones. And if all four lights are illuminated, the organ engine will play across the entire keyboard range or every zone. Even though I've split the keyboard, it's still going to play across the whole keyboard until I double click and pick either a, so a zone on the left or a zone on the right. So in this case, I'll click the zone on the left. It's going to illuminate two zone buttons because I'm only splitting it once, so it's showing me that you're on this half, on the left half. And sure enough, I have organ there. And if I push the keys on the right here, I hear nothing. The, the piano will double click and we'll get that so that the two lights on the right are illuminated, representing the right side. There's the piano, there's the organ. And there's an abrupt crossover here between the organ and the piano. And that's where this one comes in, one representing it's not going to really crossfade. I'm going to go abruptly from one zone to another, but simply adjusting that by holding this button. And this is one of the most important things to learn is how do you get up to that width area? You push this button and it moves your cursor up to the width area, and then you can adjust this here. So six notes means that it will crossfade by six semitones or six actual half steps. So let me show you what I mean. Let me turn off the piano engine just for a second, and we'll go organ. And right here is the last official key of the organ. If I go up, it's going to diminish in volume by half step until it reaches six, and then on the seventh one, you won't hear the organ anymore. So let me, sh let me play that. It's getting quieter and quieter. And why is this doing this? Well, it's doing this to make that transition between the organ and piano smoother so that it's less abrupt between the two different engines. This is more noticeable for things like when you're playing keyboard bass and you're sitting there on the bass side and everything is fine, but then your right hand is, let's say, playing piano and you accidentally go too far to the left and you hit a bass note when you really wanted just a little bit more piano on that left side. So this crossfade really helps with that. So we learned that the organ crossfades and it gets so and gets quieter as we move up the notes. Likewise, the piano, which is on the right side of the split, will diminish in volume as I go left or into the other zone. So here's the piano, the last official key of the piano. And as I go down, it'll get quieter, making a smooth transition. Now, if I have both engines on, you'll see as I go up and down through this zone, it's, it's very smooth on the transitions. Here's organ into piano, then I'll go piano into organ. Now I'm pure piano, from piano back to pure organ. Nice and smooth. And that's a six semitone option. You have a 12 option, which makes the range even wider and the subtlety between each half step even smaller. It'll slowly transition into piano and slowly transition into organ by 
by comparison to the six. Of course, there's the one and it's immediate. And that just kind of hits you um, a little more abruptly. So that is an important feature and I think one that's, that's really uh, interesting to use. All right, so if I push this button again here, you'll see I'll go right from the top part to the bottom part. So we learned a basic split. All right, let's take this now to the next level and we'll do another split. And to change the designation of how many splits, you can simply double click this to go from one to two to two to three and back to zero. You can also hold the shift button to do the exact same thing. In this case, it's not a double click. So again, how this button works, you push it on or off, double click to change or hold the shift and change it that way. Okay, and then push to hold to get into that keyboard split disc screen so you can see all the details. Okay, so now I have, let's go two splits so that two green buttons are illuminated on the left side. And you'll see here that our screen indicates that our first split point is C3 right here, and our second split point is C4 right here. So I have two splits, one and two, but that makes three zones, zone one, zone two, and zone three. So you might say, okay, well, if I have the organ in zone one and two, does it behave just like that, one and two? Yes, it does. The organ will be in zone one and two, but there'll be no organ in zone three, and there is no zone four in this case. So those two buttons on the left. Now, you might say, okay, well, two buttons on the right. Okay, so how does that work? Because I only have three zones, and you've already told me that the organ is in zone one and two, but not in three, and here's piano in zone three and four. So where is the piano going to play? That's a very good question. It's going to play in a situation that it's only on the far right zone. Let me show you. The piano only plays in that zone to the right. You might say, well, why doesn't it play in both zones to the right? Well, in a situation where I'm splitting twice, the lights indicate you have to think of yourself as, f forget how many zones there are for a minute. All you need to pay attention to is this mid split point. The mid split point, think of cutting these four zones in half, two on the left, two on the right. The mid determines what plays to the right and what plays to the left, period. It doesn't matter how many zones you're talking about. So in the case of the organ, those two lights will play in zone one and two. Why? Because zone one and two is technically between the midpoint because the midpoint in this case is designated as this. Okay, so let's say, okay, what if you had a low point and a high point, but no midpoint? That is a, an impossibility. The NOR does not let you split low and high. So that problem will never cross your path. You're either splitting mid, low and mid, mid and high, or low, mid, and high. So that's, that's the choices. So that's how it works. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, now that we've learned that, let's just do the full Monty here. We will split all three locations, which makes four zones, and that makes it really easy to see. So let me set this keyboard up exactly like the previous example so you can see exactly how that goes. So I'll take it step by step. Okay, first on panel A, we have the organ playing across all zones. So that looks like this. You double click until you get your zone indicator. You can also hold the shift key here too. It makes it a little easier to select the choices you have. And you get quite a few choices. Once you split into three, this zone indicator will have quite a few choices to pick from before you go through them all. Okay, so organ on all zones. That's how that looks. Now the next one is piano just on zones three and four. So piano, right here on zones three and four. It happens to be there already. Then on panel A, the synth is only on one and two. There's synth on one and two. And if I only have panel A invoked, it should represent organ everywhere. And piano only on three and four, but not on the left zones. And then the synth is the only thing on zone one and two, along with the organ. Okay, so let's go to panel B and represent that one. So panel B had organ on zones two and three. There we go, zone two and three. Then it had piano on two, three, and four. I'll hold the shift button this time, make it a little easier. To... There's two, three, and four and the synth only on zone one. Mm -hmm. 
And there's the synth on zone one. Put both panels together. And let's kind of run through the notes here. You can hear the organ through the whole thing. Okay, I wanted to provide another pro tip. If you hold the shift button and select KB zones, this will give you a nice visual as to what's going on with your split configuration. Here you can see I have panel A and B designated, along with four zones available. So as I invoke the split option, you can see here, here's a three-way split, and it breaks out the visual into four different zones. If I select other options, like this is just a mid-split, and you can see just the one line between zone 1 and 2, and 3 and 4. Here's another split configuration where zone 1 and 2 are available, and then zone 3 and 4 are combined. And so forth. So let's just keep all three splits here and see what happens. Okay, so if I click on panel A and turn the piano on, you can see here that it's showing me that on panel A, piano is playing through all four zones, indicated with the letter P. If I were to turn on the synth engine, but only have that on zone two, you can see that visually represented. And I'll turn my organ engine on as well, and then I'll put that, you can't see it around the camera, but I'll put that on zone one. Then I can flip over to panel B, and then indicate, uh, put the piano on zone two there, and the synth on zone three and four there, and then push the A and B buttons together, allowing me to play both panel A and B at the same time. And there's a nice visual as to what's going on regarding your split configuration. So this option is under the button KB Zones. Hold the Shift key and click KB Zones to get out of it. Like any other screen, you push the Shift button again. So that screen may come in handy for you. So lots of options on splitting the Nord Stage 3. Hopefully that will get you started or oriented around how splits and layers work. Um, I would encourage you to experiment yourself to see what you can do. Uh, some interesting things could be that you play a sample just in one small zone of the keyboard and you have that triggering something, um, something unique, even something that you've created. Let's say you create your own sample of something that's hard to duplicate any other way, so you record it and that becomes your sample and you kind of isolate that, perhaps maybe even on that far right zone. There's not a lot of keys there and it's sort of out of the way. So you could isolate your samples way on the right and then you can maybe put a bass in the left side of the zone, probably from C4 down. And then on the right side, you can have piano running through those zones two and three um, and so forth. So there's all kinds of things you can do and all kinds of split options. So I think that concludes our lesson on splits and layers, and hopefully it all made sense. <laughs>